So uh, good morning, uh, Miss uh, Melinda Emerson. Uh, you know, you also known by the you know brand name of a small biz lady. Uh -huh. And uh, in America, you are the expert. You know, in uh, small and medium sized enterprises, which is known as uh, SME. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also mentor a lot of uh, you know give uh, you know consultation guidance to small businesses in America. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, ma'am, you know you come to Cambodia, and this is your first time in Cambodia also. Mm -hmm. you you know, invited by uh, the government of uh, the U.S. to Cambodia. Mm -hmm. And um, before you come to Siem Reap, you also make some, let's say, seminar or training in Phnom Penh, mm -hmm. and also some seminar or training in Siem Reap before coming uh, here to this interview, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So my first question is that, um, what do you offer to the Cambodian listener, you know, on your expertise uh, during the seminar, ma'am? Well, what I've been training about is how to sell and market online. Mm -hmm. And specifically, we've been talking about um, using websites and email and content and SEO. I also mm -hmm. did a more in-depth training on the 12 P's of running a successful business. And that is really a capacity building training for existing entrepreneurs so that they don't feel so overwhelmed by their business. What, what do you mean overwhelmed by their business? For example, like their first time doing so and then they feel quite nervous about what they are doing? No, it's just once you run a business, mm -hmm. you have 10 to 12 jobs you have to do all at one time. Mm -hmm. And it can be overwhelming. And especially for women entrepreneurs, because women, we've got three full-time jobs. So mm -hmm. my wife, mother, business owner, we got a lot going on. So sometimes people need support mm -hmm. and they need to know about better ways to do things to save time. And that's what I teach in my 12 P's of running a successful business training, which is the training that I've done for um, the C CIWA, um, the Cambodian Women's Entrepreneur Association. Yes. So I did that training for their members. Mm. So also in, in Phnom Penh, you focus on uh, social media, just like you said, you know, how to create good content, how mm. to create good website. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, in the West or, you know, I, uh, maybe in Europe, something like that. I think, you know, the website and content, they are, I think they are very well known already. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like part of the daily life mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, digital right. life is a very big thing over there. But how do you see the digital life in, in Cambodia and especially not Phnom Penh, you know, in rural provinces like Cambodia? Well, one of the things that I've discovered since I've been here is that um, Cambodian business people rarely use websites. Everyone seems to yeah, yeah. Um, engage and do commerce on Facebook. Mm. But one of the big things that I've been teaching my students since I've been here is that it's very challenging to build a house on rented land. And that's what it is when you build your whole business on Facebook. Everyone should have a website. They can still do business on Facebook, but they need to have a website. And the reason why that is so important here in Cambodia is because tourism is one of the number one um, industries in this country. And if I'm a tourist and I'm coming from outside of the United States, mm -hmm. I'm going to do a Google search and I'm going to say best things to do in Siem Reap, best not, things to do in Phnom Penh. Not too much of a Facebook search, no. No, you, <laughs> yeah. would, you wouldn't do a Facebook no, no, search. No. And, and, yeah. and perfect example is I actually did that before I came here. Mm. Best things to do in Siem Reap. And a, a tour company came up with a beautiful article, 43 things to do in Siem Reap. And they were able to promote their services through the content that they share. And so what I demonstrated for my students was that building your whole business on Facebook is dangerous because it's rented land. Mm. You don't have a customer list. You don't have a way to keep in touch with people over time. And most often, the first time someone sees your offer, they're not likely to buy. So how can you nurture that relationship? With email. Email. And I know email is also not popular here. Even though it's still old, but it's still, you know, the way to go. For, it is. 87% yeah. of marketers use email. Mm. So in order for your business to level up, and get to the point where you can get business from anywhere, not just in Cambodia with the, you know, 50 people that like your Facebook page. Mm. You need to make sure that you can be found in Google searches 
And the way to do that is with a website. So what you train them in Phnom Penh is more of a, you know, not not just only to survive on the social media like Facebook, but to survive on your own land. That's what you mean. Yes, yes. Because if you build your own website, mm -hmm. you can track where your traffic comes from. If you build an email list, you can always sell to your email list over and over again. Mm -hmm. If you're just selling clothes on Facebook and someone's just giving you their phone number, you, you don't have a way to track and nurture the relationship and build your brand and build trust over time. They're just going to buy that and walk away. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you want. You want repeat business. You want people to do business with you over and over again. Yes, ma'am. But uh, just to clarify a bit, because, you know, the majority of Cambodian people are still on Facebook. I know. So <laughs> they, still, they still need to advertise a bit on Facebook, but at yes. the same time to reach the international audiences. They need to do more than just Facebook. Absolutely. And definitely you can do Facebook ads, right? And yeah. I would definitely say if you're just getting started with online advertising, Facebook ads is a really good place to start. Mm -hmm. And you can test for a very low amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, but I always say test before you invest. You want to make sure that you know exactly the audience you want to track and that you have multiple ads to test with. Mm -hmm. Most people should test with at least five ads and they should test for maybe about a week. And then once the, once the test is over, then you focus on the two ads that perform the best mm -hmm. and that's where the pu push the rest of your budget. So it's still, you know, quite technical. And it, 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 it is, it, and, it's, and it's an easy yeah. way to lose a bunch of money if you don't know what you're doing. So that's yeah. why I always say, test before you invest like so test with just a little bit of money to see if people are even interested in what you're in what you're saying what you're trying to offer yes ma'am so uh, in cambodia you know sme is considered the backbone one of the backbone of the economy and um that's uh, actually true around the world around the world yes. the backbone of <laughs> yeah, the economy. Yeah. in the united yeah. states small businesses are responsible for 70 to 80 percent mm -hmm. of the employment in the country Mm. So that's true everywhere. Everywhere around the world. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. So in Cambodia, do you, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic, do you see that, you know, the SME in Cambodia is, let's say, on a better track, you know, to, you know, to, to development, let's say. And, you know, in Cambodia, based on your expert, you know, expert view, SME is on the road to be, you know, let's say, manage structurally mm -hmm. or they are still you know manage like family like you know because asian people they they come as a family they sell as a family the uncles the aunties the mm -hmm. son the daughters mm -hmm. so is it still family like or it it come it, it comes as a structure you know well i don't think um whether it's a family business mm -hmm. or um, a solo business just one person yes, i think that it doesn't even matter it's really about how sophisticated the business is run. Mm -hmm. You know, how structured are the marketing systems, are the financial pricing systems, are the offerings, you know, how, how are you making sure that you're staying on top of industry trends and customer behaviors, right? You've got to make sure that whether you're a family business or a solo business, you have to know who your customer is and what their challenges are so that you can position yourself as the best solution for them. Mm. A lot of times people get into trouble because they want to sell to everybody. Mm. Well, if you're trying to sell to everybody, you're selling to nobody. You want to sp specifically serve a very small market. We call that niche marketing. Niche marketing. And you want to do that because it, most small business owners, let me scratch that, all small business owners have the same two problems, limited time and limited resources. So you need mm. to pick a marketing target that you can hit with your limited resources. Can you give some small example, of, not small, but you know, brief example of what the niche in America is, let's say, from your... Well, let, let's just say my niche in America is I really focus on women entrepreneurs mm. and I and I work with women entrepreneurs who who are um, professionals. They are educated. They um, have some success, but they're tired of working uh, for the man. They're tired of working for corporations 
and they want to strike out on their own. Mm. So my book, Become Your Own Boss in 12 Months, is a one year plan to leave your corporate job to start a business. Mm. And that's who I specialize in serving. People who are in corporate, they're a little bit successful, but they know that they could be a lot more successful if they work for themselves. And I give those people a plan so they don't have to be afraid. A lot of people stay in jobs that they hate out of fear because they're worried about how they'll take care of their families or they're worried about how they'll take care of, of health insurance. And these yeah, things yeah. are very expensive. But if you have a plan, you don't have to be afraid. You can just work your plan. Yes, ma'am. Um, back to the social media, you know, uh, visibility, especially in, uh, let's say, not Phnom Penh, because Phnom Penh, I think, you know, the majority of the people knows how to, you know, utilize the social media well, but, you know, in case of Cambodia only. But, you know, in, for example, other provinces, Siem Reap, you know, or maybe to the northern side, Batambong, uh, or maybe to the southern side, Kampot, I think there are so many more places that should be, you know, out there online, you know, mm -hmm. but instead, only Cambodian people know it, you know, because they know it from hearing from their neighbors say it, their mm -hmm. relatives say it. So I know that it is hard to push people to go online, especially for, you know, let's say older business people, mm -hmm. they don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, how, how to let them, let's say, or maybe, you know, how to let them tell their younger generation, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be more visible online let's say well i think it starts with education okay. you know all the wonderful business associations need to start talking about this people need to make it a norm i mean mm -hmm. the one good thing that i think the pandemic did for all of us is it forced everybody online it forced everything online because you couldn't go out you couldn't leave your home so there is has been a lot of advances in people utilizing online services and resources but we have to make it a social norm. Mm. Um, so I think that there's sometimes there are things that catch on fast and there are things that catch on slow. <laughs> But if we keep saying it and if the business leaders keep talking about it yep. and if the government gets behind it, everyone will eventually know that this is how you do business or this is how you promote yourself online. And it's very important. Yes, ma'am. But uh, let's say a few days ago, I talked to a marketing guy also. He's an American. He said that, you know, just getting yourself online doesn't mean that people is going to see you because now everyone is online. That's true. So you said, you know, you, you mentioned content creation should be, uh, oh, yeah. you know, pinpoint or something. Absolutely. Like so let me explain to yeah. you. Um, when it comes to successful online marketing, there's four things that have, you have to do. Number one, you have to have a website. Number mm -hmm. two, you have to have a content strategy. Number three, you have to use social media. And use social media to build brand awareness. And you could also use social media to produce direct sales. Mm -hmm. But then you also have to have email because email is how you build relationships over time. Because online, It takes a minimum of seven interactions, as many as 30 interactions, before people feel like they trust you enough to give you their credit card, to give you, you their mean money. Interaction like messaging, messaging, reaction. content, oh, okay. seeing you online, going to your website, learning more about you, reading testimonials about happy customers that like you, that mm -hmm. like, you know, th yeah. you gotta, you really, because think about it. When you sell online to someone, they can't taste, they yeah. can't smell, they can't try on the jacket. They cannot. No, they so, cannot believe if the image is right, AI or not. Right. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta come at them yeah. multiple times yeah. so they believe that you are real. And so you gotta put in the work. One of the things that I tell people all the time is that you can build it, but if you're not promoting it. Nobody will know. Mm. And then when you're dealing with Facebook, you definitely have to buy ads on Facebook because they will limit you from having access to the people who like you. Yep. But, you know, let's say advertisement on Facebook in America is not as popular as before. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong, because I, well, I don't really I, know. I think that Facebook is losing um, 
it's losing um, users, users, but it's still the biggest. Mm, it's still the biggest. And um, I would say Instagram is number two behind mm. behind um, Facebook. Yep. And believe it or not, number three is YouTube. Yeah, yeah, a lot of ads are on YouTube. Yeah, right? a lot. Of, yeah, so yep. and um, and YouTube is the second most searched site on the internet. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, and TikTok is growing very fast. But as I've been teaching my students this week, you know, TikTok is about to be banned in the United States. Mm. So if you build your whole business on TikTok, what are you gonna do? Because the largest market in the world. Is about to ban TikTok. You're putting all the eggs in one basket. Right. Yeah, this is yeah, exactly yeah. why I'm telling people that Facebook is dangerous for the mm. same reason. Because Facebook could get banned. I mean, there's lawsuits in America right now. Facebook could get in trouble. Facebook could get banned. So that's why it's important for you to have your own real estate that you own online, which is your website. Yes, ma'am. Again, you know, to the case of Cambodia, but I don't think it is only in Cambodia. I think it's global also. You know, uh, especially when young people, they learn business and they want to become, you know, their own young entrepreneur. And you know, at the same time, let's say their parents are also entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but they do it based on their own experience, you know, trial and error. Mm -hmm. But younger people, they learn through the textbook, and then they said, "Oh, I can do it." So you know. From your expert view, again, you know, how do you, let's say, uh, balance between, you know, the knowledge that you only learn on textbook and then, you know, compare that to the knowledge that you learn in real life, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, sometimes, you know, the parents who do business and the younger boy or girls who also wants to do business, mm -hmm. they go into debate often, you know, they said, <laughs> oh, mom, you don't know that, I learned that. <laughs> and then the mom and the dad said, no, you don't know that, you just, you just learn it through textbook. There's a saying, they say that, I eat salt more than you eat rice. <laughs> in Khmer, in Khmer, you know. So I like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the thing that you have to do in order to be successful in business, you have to be a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in business for 25 years, and I have grown and changed and. Now I have an online school and a, a membership site for women entrepreneurs, Small mm -hmm. Biz Lady Academy. I didn't have those things even three years ago. So mm -hmm. I have evolved myself. When I was um, in my 18th year in business, I went to graduate school and got an MBA mm -hmm. because I wanted to have that knowledge and that learning. So, and I'm constantly reading books and listening to podcasts and, and, and going to conferences to learn. So you, you can't just go by what you learned in school because business is always changing. Industry is changing. Customer behavior changes, right? I mean, five years ago, they never would have had as much online transactions as they do even in America, were it not for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now everybody shops online. Everybody uses online banking, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so these are things that five years ago. So the textbook cannot change that fast, of course. No, the yeah, textbook yeah. can't change that yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. Textbooks are usually five years behind industry. Mm. So you have to, you have to constantly um, sharpen your own knife. You have yeah. to constantly be looking at the latest um, industry trends and experts, like people like me, you know, I teach everything that I learn. I write blog posts about everything that I learn. So I am, I have written over 5,000 articles about yeah. how to start and grow a successful business. And every time I learn something, I write it down, I share. Yes, ma'am, but you know, another, not, I don't say that it is a big issue, but still, you know, something that is still concerning for some entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, is that when they try to make something, because, you know, it's about the, you know, when, when you make it, uh, how do you call it, like a production of scale, you know, mm -hmm. the less you make, the more expensive it becomes when you sell it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's say about five to six years ago, there were many family mart. You know, like the, the small mart mm -hmm. owned by family members. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they, they run quite well for, for one or two years, three years. And then the big, you know, mart, supermarket, mm -hmm. you know, they, they also mm -hmm. make their own branches. They sell franchise. Mm -hmm. They just, you know, become, let's say, more efficient. Yeah. And then the small business went down. Mm -hmm. So how do you 
manage that, you know? I mean, that's hard and that happens everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, in America, we've seen a lot of that um, big, big, big box retailers come in and the little small businesses, you know, get pushed out. But what I will say is that when you build a, a loyal following, when you build customers that in the community where you are that value what you offer, mm. you can survive even when a big business comes. But Definitely. you have to be very intentional mm. about building your customer base and about becoming ingrained as a part of the community. And when you do that, you can survive. People will prefer to come to a family owned restaurant versus a big chain, yeah. right? Because there's value in that. They yeah. know all the ingredients is fresh, you know, like things like that. Yeah, yeah. So I think that you just have to be intentional about being a part of the community and having, and, and having people know how much you appreciate their business. And then when, sometimes when new things come, everybody wants to go try new, but they have to remember who was always here with them. Yes, responding to your answer, you know, there's a bread, uh, there's a bakery in Siembrip. I think they are not on Facebook, they are not on any social media. They don't ha even have a logo, but everyone in Siembrip knows it. Exactly. But, and, but they, they have been running for like, I think more than, I think decades, you know, but they are very committed to their- Sure, yeah. sure. Now, yeah. we could help them, we could get them a logo, we could get them a website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope they, <laughs> they can, yeah, they can do, yeah. But uh, at the same time, ma'am, you know, because uh, in, in Phnom Penh, in Sibrip, um, some businesses, they open very quickly mm -hmm. and then they boom, you know, they many customers. But, you know, let's say, you know, sometimes I also feel, you know, quite confusing, you know, they open and then they get a lot of customers. And then after one year, they just close down immediately. Hmm. So, but that is just one example, of course. But from your you know, perspective, what are some of the common failures that happen to oh. SME? Well, one of the biggest um, causes of business failure, I think, is just lack of planning. You know, people leap and then look. And it's hmm. uh, like, you have to plan for success. It's not going to just happen to you. The second biggest mistake, I think, is people don't focus on a specific customer. They think mm. everybody can use our bakery. No, you have to focus on a specific customer that you serve. Even though everyone eats bread. Everybody eats bread, but, but they still everybody's bread. not willing to pay a premium price for their bread. So who mm. are the people that want this special bread and are willing to pay a little bit more for it, right? That's not everybody. That's a specific group of people, mm. right? And usually, since moms do a lot of the cooking, <laughs> It's a specific woman that you that is the customer for that bakery, mm. right? I see, ma'am. Now, the third reason why small businesses fail is because of lack of financial uh, discipline. Uh, you must operate with a budget. Mm. And usually, if you don't manage your personal finances with a budget, you're not going to manage your business with a budget. And that's a problem because you have to track your expenses very carefully, especially in the first two to three years of a business, mm -hmm. because you're still trying to like make it. It takes typically 18 to 24 months for a small business to break even. Mm -hmm. And so- Two years. Two years, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you have to like really watch your budget and make sure that you know how you're gonna turn that cost into revenue. Right, mm -hmm. and you can turn this cost into revenue. And if you can't figure out how to do that, it's a no, don't buy it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But another thing, you know, that I noticed also is that, you know, the, the fact of, you know, let's say not young, you know, like not young in, in terms of teenagers, but, you know, young adult mm -hmm. who wants to do the joint venture business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes they may not be, you know, let's say, very mature enough, you know, in terms of, you know, like you said, you know, financial maturity, you mm -hmm. know, compromises. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when they join as a venture together, they have different, you know, path ideas. Mm -hmm. Especially when they gain something, they, 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 they will have, you know, different ideas on where to direct mm -hmm. the, the group, you know. Mm -hmm. So is that also one of the problems? Well, I think that 
the one thing you have to do as a business owner, especially a young business owner, yeah, yeah. is be coachable, mm, be flexible, yeah, yeah. and recognize that there are people out here that have forgotten more than you know. So pay attention to people who have been in business a long time. Mm. What I say is that often um, in America, if you make it past five years in business, you are very special because 90% of small businesses in America go out of business within five years. Within five years. Yeah, so if you make it past five years, you know something about what you're doing, right? Mm. So when a really young, uh, really energetic young entrepreneur wants to start, that's great. You need high energy and excitement, but you also need to be humble and listen to a more senior business owner to give you advice because there's a lot of ways to lose money in business. And if you're not careful, you're going to find out all of them. <laughs> but but how, how, how many businesses, you know, let's say normally does a person fail in order, you know, to, to, run, to run a good... I, I know the number, you know, it's, it's, that's not reflect, you know... Ju well, ju the ju listen, side, I, yeah. I don't even believe yeah. in failure. I don't. Okay, okay. I, I think that mm. in business, you either win or you learn. Mm, yeah. No failure. It's just some lessons get to be more expensive than others. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, but that's the cost. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You pay to learn. <laughs> I see. So maybe also uh, the last question of uh, this interview. Uh, I, I read the, the preview of your book, you know, before uh, coming here. And, you know, you, you, you dissect the topic in, in the monthly order, you know? ranging from what you do on the 12th month, what you do on the 11th month, the mm -hmm. first month, you know, mm -hmm. right before the opening. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell, first of all, can you tell me briefly about, you know, let, not, not each month, but, you know, the main part of the, the sure. dissection. Sure. And also, for those who read this, like you said, you try to help people from the corporate world to their own, their own world, if I mm -hmm. may put it mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So is it, the book is only good for people who understand business a little bit no, already? No, oh. no, 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 no. Uh, um, my book is for anybody with an idea. With an idea. Who wants to go into business. Mm. Um, but if you, if you um, have education, and it could be education in anything. You could be a teacher, um, you know, a lawyer, uh, an engineer. It does not matter. Like, you don't have to be a business expert to understand my book. Mm. That's actually part of the reason why I wrote it because it's very simple and straightforward. So I can teach anyone how to start a business. Mm. Um, but, you know, it helps if you are educated, but you don't have to be. Yeah. There's plenty of people who are artisans and um, contractor, electrician, auto mechanic, who read my book and sent me an email. I read this book and it changed my life. Now I have the courage to start my business mm. from all over the world. You know, so, no, I, I don't think it's just limited to people. So many anything. people run their business well after they read your book? You know, you get a lot of feedback from them? I think yeah. so. My book has been in print for 14 years. 14 years, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's helped a lot of people over the years. Uh, only in America or you also get messages from around the world? Around the world. My book mm. was released in multiple languages around the world. Okay. We've sold over 100,000 copies. So... Yeah, I get letters from all over all the world. Over the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing about business is business is exciting. People want to start businesses. And mm. oftentimes people don't know how hard it is. They don't know that most businesses fail, don't make it five years. Mm. But that doesn't mean they shouldn't try. I will also say that the number one reason why people go out of business is because they run out of money. Mm. So usually cash flow is the reason why people run out of, run up, have to go out of business. They don't have money to continue. So business, it is, is an expensive project. Oh, sometimes. yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. So, you know, in Cambodia, let's say, you know, the subject of uh, business in school, I don't say that it take off recently, but it is, you know, still, uh, you know, as an academic subject. 
not too far ago, you know, because the people before they do business from their own practical know-how. Mm-hmm. So when you look at young, let's say, you know, uh, uh, you know, young people who are about to be the entrepreneur or they are already a newly, you know, uh, uh, a new entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. How how do you see their their let's say human resource? You know their capacity. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, let's say their English language or or sometimes you know their understanding to the global market. Mm-hmm. Do you see something particular about them in Cambodia? Well, I think that um, the great thing about entrepreneurship yes, is if you build a better mousetrap. The world will be the path to your door, no matter where your door is. So what I love about business now is that, yes, it helps to know English. Mm -hmm. It helps to know marketing and accounting, too. But a lot of times you learn that as you go. But what I know is that the world is still waiting on great ideas. Mm -hmm. And so if you are young and you have a great idea and you figure out how to get it out there, it could change your life. Most people are one idea away from being able to do anything they want. And entrepreneurship is the best way to do it. It's really the only way to build true wealth is through entrepreneurship. 